After being a top 10 pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the future seemed bright for Josh Rosen. He was going to a team that had Larry Fitzgerald and David Johnson, and this team also had some key defensive talent with Patrick Peterson as well. What happened over the next two years is still pretty surprising. The coaching staff in Arizona was fired, and in came Cliff Kingsbury, who drafted Kyler Murray with the first overall pick before trading Rosen to the Dolphins. On the Dolphins, Rosen was given a chance to compete for the starting job. With only Ryan Fitzpatrick on the roster, I honestly thought he'd win the job outright. Unfortunately, this didn't happen, and the Dolphins drafted two with the fifth overall pick, signaling the end Rosen's chances of starting Miami. After spending some time watching his film over the past two seasons, I wanted to see what exactly happened. At one point, Rosen was my favorite quarterback in the 2018 NFL Draft, and he clearly hasn't lived up to those expectations. Is it bad luck? Is it a poor supporting cast? Or is it something else that is stopping him from being successful in the NFL? For these questions, I decided to turn to his tape and create this video. Before we really dive deep, I just wanted to thank Raid Shadow Legends for being the sponsor of this week's video. If you're looking for a free mobile game that is easy to pick up and has beautiful graphics, look no further than Raid. When I'm creating one of my videos and I need to kill some time while it processes, I like to jump on and play for a few minutes here and there. Now, typically when it comes to RPGs, I'm a Final Fantasy VII type of guy, but lately, just due to how busy I've been creating these videos, this is a great alternative to that game. Also, with constantly ongoing tournaments, you can challenge yourself to the edge and compete against the entire raid community while fighting the Spider's Den, Ice Golem's Peak, the Almighty Fire Knight, or the Notorious Dragon. And now, Raid Patch 1.15 is coming in May, and with that, you'll be able to compete in the brand new arena tournament where you can earn points according to your tier and win awesome rewards in both local and global tournaments. In the video description, click on the special links, and if you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver plus one free epic champion, the Barbarian Jodan. Additionally, not only is this game for mobile, but you can play on desktop as well. So with that being said, let's get back to the topic at hand. The first thing that stood out to me when I looked at Rosen's film was just how inconsistent he was with his accuracy. You'd see him place a great throw up the sideline or over the middle of the field, and then on the very next play, he'd miss a wide open receiver. It was infuriating to watch. Even when he had a clean pocket, he would miss open players left and right. According to Next Gen Stats, which has one of my favorite metrics called completion percentage above expectation, Rosen ranked last or near last in their metrics. This metric factors in things like distance thrown, separation from the nearest defender, and pressure faced before the pass. In 2019, Rosen had a differential of negative 11.7%, which is dead last out of 40, and he ranked 35th out of 39 in 2018 with a differential of negative 4.5. In layman's terms, if a quarterback is expected to complete 65% of his passes during a given season, Rosen, on average, will complete 53% of those throws. While I do like this metric a lot, the one thing that I don't like is that it doesn't factor in things like drops. It really should adjust for those and compare adjusted completion percentages instead. This is especially important for a quarterback like Rosen, whose receivers dropped over 8% of his passes. With the average drop rate right around 5%, Rosen's metrics look objectively worse. Even though this is the case, Rosen's stats are still pretty bad. In addition to this metric, Rosen also ranks low in my other favorite stat, adjusted net yards per attempt. This metric factors in passing yards, touchdowns, interceptions, and sacks, and then it normalizes those volume-based stats on a per-attempt basis. Rosen was so low in this stat that it made feeling high schoolers' GPAs look good in comparison. With the average NFL quarterback right around 6.1 and the elites usually above 7.5, Rosen, on the other hand, was at 3.5 and 2.1 respectively for his two seasons. Needless to say, both metrics are pretty bad. What killed me as I was going through his film was that Rosen was usually fine in the quick passing game when he can throw in rhythm coming out of his drop. However, any time he was forced off his original spot and he had to move to make his throw, his accuracy dipped drastically. He then added in pressure and it seemed like he lost all confidence. What I loved about him coming out of college was his footwork and consistency, and that completely fell apart as soon as he entered the NFL when he faced actual pressure. That last thing that I said really, really bothers me. I think pressure, especially early on in a game before he gets into rhythm, carries over later in the game as well. He's one of those guys that if it starts bad, it's probably going to get worse. I just never truly saw him recover from a deficit. I also never really saw him create anything big on broken plays, which happened a lot in these offenses. In my opinion, the ability to create off script and create in the face of danger is what separates the good from the elite quarterbacks. Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, and even a rookie like Kyler Murray all have this innate ability. They can create plays when all hell is breaking loose. They have the awareness or the sixth sense for what the defense is going to do even at the face of danger. This is just not what Rosen is good at. When things broke down and this constantly happened on both teams, things only got worse and he rarely did anything to improve the situations. At times, Rosen would play hero ball not understanding his own limitations, and he'd try to use his legs as opposed to sensing pressure and moving to throw outside the pocket. What made things even worse was that when he did move outside the throw, his passes were behind or late, and that only made the matters worse. 
to look at a few plays, I want to jump to his final start of the 2019 season to talk about his game against the Washington Redskins in Week 6. In this game, Rosen wasn't just bad. He was awful. In a game considered by many to be the toilet bowl of the season, Rosen was facing the 24th ranked defense according to DVOA. He should have had a better performance. However, he couldn't get anything going through the air. Most of his yards came on screens and dump offs, and he also threw two picks. I'm going to show you two back to back plays because they highlight exactly what happened this game and they also show a much broader trend. The first play occurred in the middle of the third quarter. It was second and 20. Rosen took his three step drop at a shotgun and then he looked over the middle of the field at a slot receiver. He decided that he was sufficiently covered, so he moved on to his check down, who gained four yards. While this throw may seem routine, I think Rosen had an opportunity with an aggressive strike. His slot receiver, Isaiah Ford, ran an over route. If Rosen threw the ball immediately after Ford broke and put it on his play side shoulder away from the linebacker, this could have been a 15 yard completion. Yes, this pass would have required perfect timing and it definitely would have been a difficult throw. Again, I'm not saying this is easy or it's a free play or anything like that. What I am saying is that when you're down 11 points in the third quarter facing a second and long and you can't get anything going throughout this game, these are the types of throws you have to make in order to give your offense a chance. A perfect strike could have been the spark that this offense desperately needed. This was a consistent problem all season long. Not only did he not take chances when I thought he should have, but he was also late on throws when he took the chance that I was okay with him taking. That's exactly what happened on his very next throw. He was late and threw an interception, and this was the final straw on why Rosen was benched for Ryan Fitzpatrick for the rest of the season. It was third and 16 after that four yard gain on the previous play. The Redskins dropped into Tampa 2 coverage again. Rosen had almost the same exact opportunity like before, where his slot receiver ran a spot route sitting at the first down. The only way you can make this throw is if you time it perfectly. You have to anticipate your receiver breaking open, and you have to put it in only a spot where he can bring it for the completion. That didn't happen on this one. Rosen was late, and he threw the ball after his receiver already broke. This late throw allowed the linebacker to key his eyes and then jump in front of it for the interception. For a quarterback like Josh Rosen, a half of a second is all it takes on these types of throws. Rosen doesn't have elite arm strength. When you're a quarterback who doesn't have elite or even upper tier arm strength, you have to be impeccable with your timing. Then when you add in a bit of a windup to your release like Rosen has, and it just makes matters worse. This lack of timing is something he struggled with and it led to some pretty bad plays. Here's another one back in week eight during the 2018 season against the 49ers. In this play, Rosen was faced with a third and six. Just like before, Rosen threw a late interception over the middle of the field. On this hang concept with a spot route sitting at the 35 yard line, this pass should have been out a half or full second earlier. It should have been out now as I've paused the screen, allowing him to fit the ball between zones. Unfortunately, Rosen took an extra hitch before he threw it, allowing the safety to pick it off. Now, after going through his tape, I wanted to take a moment to discuss the most common argument heard in the Josh Rosen debate. When people talk about him, they instantly say that he was in a terrible situation on both teams, that due to this situation, it's not fair to him and that he was never really given a chance. To that, I think there is some truth to that statement. Rosen has been put in terrible situations. Bad offensive lines, bad receiving cores, bad coaching, and bad play calling all had their effects. It's all been pretty bad. However, as I've already discussed so far in this video, it's not like Rosen has exactly carried this offense on his own. Rosen, by my tracking, didn't exactly make things easier for his teams either. One thing to note is that when Rosen was benched for Ryan Fitzpatrick in week six, the offense instantly improved. They scored 16 points and Fitzpatrick almost led them to winning this game. Now granted, it is the Washington Redskins and they were really bad last season, but facing the same exact defense with the same exact weapons behind the same exact offensive line, Fitzpatrick was simply better. He did more with this offense. He took calculated risks, he operated better while plays were breaking down, and he threw the ball with better timing, allowing his receivers to actually make plays. Now, let me be clear on this, I'm not saying Fitzpatrick was great or that he deserves a start, but what I am saying is that Fitzpatrick was objectively better than Rosen in the same exact situation and that needs to be said. Moving on, so far in this video we've covered the main reasons why I think Rosen has struggled in the NFL. Spotty accuracy, pressure affecting his throws and process, and poor anticipation that led to him throwing late passes. These are all big issues. Even though this is the case, I want to spend some time going back through his tape to show you the light at the end of the tunnel. What I found interesting was that Rosen has shown flashes even during the season. For example, in week two when Rosen came off the bench against the Patriots while they were down by 30, Rosen looked a lot better than his stats show. He completed seven passes on 18 attempts for 97 yards, but he easily should have had another 100 yards based on three drops that I counted. These were huge plays that Rosen threw perfectly. A 50 yarder up the right sideline, a 35 yarder up the left sideline, and likely another 20 yards that were all dropped. Things actually looked promising in this game, even though the team was down by a lot. With this thought in mind, I wanted to go back through his 2018 season to see if he showed any similar flashes. 
I wanted to find games where Rosen looked great from start to finish that showed the upside that I saw from him coming out of college. For this task, I landed on week 4 against the Seahawks. In this game, Rosen was incredible. When once again you factor in drops on perfectly placed throws, Rosen's stat line didn't do him justice. Some of these key drops could have been the difference in the Cardinals winning this game versus them losing. What kills me though, is that this game was a one-time thing. Rosen hasn't shown any sort of consistency from start to finish in any of the other 15 games that he started. That's really the main problem and the main reason why I made this video. So to wrap this up, the question you may logically ask, is Rosen done in the NFL? Should Rosen be given another shot elsewhere and could he possibly succeed? In my opinion, there's always a chance for redemption, but the question comes down to two parts, where and how. Where will be a good spot for him that has a system in place that matches his strengths and how will he overcome the clear issues that he has? The problem is that spotty accuracy, even behind a good pocket, will translate to literally every single team out there. The same goes with throwing anticipation and the same goes with how he deals with pressure. The question you have to ask is will any coach stake their job on him as a player after he has already clearly struggled? Personally, I just don't see that happening. Now, I will say that if a team like the Patriots or the Steelers who both have solid offensive lines and good coaching gave him an opportunity, maybe that'll help him recover. Anything is certainly possible. Regardless of where he ends up or even if he stays in the Dolphins, he needs to get back to what made him good in college. He needs to get better at throwing accurate from the pocket and he needs to get better at dealing with pressure. Until he does both, it's going to be an uphill battle for Rosen. Well, that's it for this one. In my next film room on this channel, we'll move on to a potential breakout player in Raheem Mostert. He looked incredible in his final games with the 49ers on their Super Bowl run. I want to talk about what he did well and talk about realistic projections for him next season. Until then, if you liked my work, subscribe to my channel. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.